we tested the biggest spray drone in America, the Helio 272, against the Agris T40. I'm Taylor with Agri Spray Drones. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on these two drones, from everything on the software side to the hardware side to the efficiency side, and just what I think in general. Let's get started. We're gonna look at three categories on these two drones. We're gonna look at software, hardware, and efficiency. From the software side, what are the differences here? What do I like? What don't I like on the Helio system? Well, on the Helio system, there's a couple things I like. I like the fact that you can input client information, and I like the fact that you get an immediate report right after you're done applying because you're operating on a laptop, that report generates automatically, and you can print that out or email that out to the person right then and there from the same device you operate from. Now, that is a double-edged sword though because on the automated side you operate with a laptop but on the manual side you operate it with the remote so you actually have to have two pieces of hardware a laptop and a remote neither of which are actually designed to operate in a in a rugged or dirty or wet environment like um, might typically be common operating in the field this also brings up another uh, issue on the helio side is since you have two systems here what we noticed was whenever the system was paused, so the drone paused in the middle of the field, whether it's by accident or, or, or by design, this, the user could not actually restart the automated process from the remote. They had to go to the laptop to restart the automated process. That actually caused some issues on the efficiency side on the Helio. Versus on the Agris side, all of your automation and manual control is all right here. Um, so you can take over manually at any point in time. And it's a rugged, it's a rugged device, has an external battery and internal battery. It's a very well thought out system. The other thing on the software we'll look at is the flow rate control on these drones. So on the Helio side, you actually have to input the gallons per minute that you want, combine that with the speed and the route spacing or the swath width to get your effective gallons per acre, which seems backwards to me because on the Agri system, you just input the gallons per acre that you want and the system figures out how fast you can fly and it figures out the pump control for you automatically. And it actually varies the pump speed for you on the Agri side so that it's not over or under applying whether it's speeding up or slowing down. On the Helio side, it was actually off. It, was, it could only put out about 2.5 gallons per minute, which was about 30% less than the user wanted, than the pilot wanted, but the system did not alert him. So we were actually getting a lower rate with the, the Helio drone. Now lastly, on the software side that we'll look at with these two drones is safety. Because they are big drones, which means they can be you know, dangerous at times, especially whenever you're taking off and landing. You really wanna make sure that you pay attention, you have protocols. Part of that's on the user, and part of that's on the software to do for you. So on the Helio side, there's no warning whenever the drone takes off. Now it beeps every few seconds when it's on the ground, but upon takeoff, there is no warning. The props just spin up and then it lifts off very quickly actually, which is good for efficiency potentially, but bad for safety whenever somebody might be standing close and you're not paying attention. Same thing happens upon return to home. The Helio drone comes home and goes down and lands automatically without user input. And with the drone that weighs almost 500 pounds and with blades that are made out of carbon fiber and very sharp, that could be dangerous if somebody is in the landing area not paying attention, which in an ag environment, or if it's hot and you've been operating all day, that can happen sometimes. So on the Agri side, before the drone takes off, before T40 takes off, it beeps for three seconds and warns anybody who's close to get away and actually won't take off um, if somebody's 20 feet you know, in proximity to it, unless you check a box and tell it to take off. return to home, it hovers at 10 feet above the home point until the user actually tells it to land, which is great for safety. Let's look at the hardware on these two drones. Now you may have heard that Helio designs and builds these drones in Texas. Well, on the 272 that we're looking at here, 
all the hardware comes from China. In fact, you can actually get all of the hardware as a fully built drone from companies in China. Now what Helio does is they bring the components in, they assemble the drone, and they put on some extra radars, they put on uh, RTK, and then they put in uh, their own flight controller. Visually speaking, the drone is, and hardware speaking, it's the same drone as others that you can find out there, but Helio does have some proprietary components that are on this drone. There are a few things that are kind of nice on the, on the Helio, um, potentially depending on what you want to do. That is the tank size. So this is a very big drone. Uh, we were able to get 17 gallons in this drone. And when you're doing a four gallon rate like we were today, well, that means with the Helio drone, you can actually fly down and back on a half mile long run at a four gallon rate um, without running out. Versus with a 10 and a half gallon tank, four gallon rate, you can't make it down and back uh, on one tank. Now in our case, we had a small field, so it didn't really matter that much here, but with larger fields and high rates, yeah, it might matter. At a two gallon rate, with the Agris, with the T40, you can go down and back on a half mile long run. Now, on the hardware side, things we noticed that uh, I did not necessarily like uh, were the fact that the, the user, the operator, the pilot actually told me that uh, the radars never worked uh, correctly. And so he was actually operating without obstacle avoidance. Um, I know Helio you know, touts they have good obstacle avoidance, but we were not able to verify that. Um, the other thing was the camera uh, seemed to lose signal about 300 yards away. And it was a GoPro camera. Uh, the resolution wasn't great on it to begin with, but you, we really didn't have a camera to speak of uh, during the operation. And on the tank on the Helio, there actually is no level sensor. So when you have the drone full, you don't actually know how much is in there. You just have to input into the system that there is 17 gallons whenever you start out. And the flow meter counts down from there during application. This brings us to our last thing, efficiency. So when we talk about efficiency, there's several things we want to talk about. We already said that the Helio drone is big, meaning that it can do large fields at a high volume, perhaps more efficiently. Um, in our case here, we do, we're doing a small field, and so that wasn't necessarily a factor. Um, on the Helio side, it was able to discharge at a rate of 2.5 gallons per minute. On the Agris side, on the T40 side, we were able to discharge this product at a rate of 3.2 gallons per minute. So we're able to discharge the tank uh, quite a bit faster with the T40 uh, than the Helio, because A, it's a smaller tank, and B, it's discharging at, at a higher rate. And then secondly, we look on the ground. So the refill process is incredibly important to have that um, you know, very efficient, very fast. On the T40 side, we were able to refill the tank, replace the battery um, from landing to takeoff. That time was under a minute, about 50 seconds is what we got that down to. That was with one person. So one person had the remote, set the remote down, refilled the tank, replaced the battery, back to the remote and take off. On the Helio side, we had a bit of a race, of course. And so they had five people. They had one person for each battery. There's two batteries. Uh, they had one person take the cap off, one person with the nozzle, and then one person at the control center. Uh, so with five people, uh, the fastest they got it down to was about a minute uh, 25, one minute 25 seconds. Now, if you had one person doing this, it would be significantly longer because the Helio has two very large batteries, meaning that you cannot carry two batteries and the nozzle out to the drone. Even if you could, you'd have to start the nozzle and walk around to each side of the drone independently to change those batteries. Because it's such a large drone, it's very hard to lean over and change those big batteries um, from standing in one spot. Which means that you either have to have a crew with you at all times, uh, or it's going to take you significantly longer than a minute and a half by yourself um, to refill and replace batteries on the Helio drone. All right, so final thoughts. Is the Helio better than the Agris T40? Well, I'm not gonna say either one is better. They're just very different drones overall. The Helio is a very large drone, uh, it requires two people to pick it up, um, but you can apply a four gallon rate on a half mile long field and go down and back on one pass. So there is, is a, a pretty good scenario where a Helio could be better. First on the Agris side, um, it's a smaller platform, easy to maneuver, has a lot more um, technical advancements and a lot more uh, user-friendly, I would say. 
Overall, I think the Agris T40 probably is a better fit for most people. That and it's less than half the price of the Helio. Uh, but there are definitely applications where the Helio uh, does make sense. And this application that we did today may actually be one of those. All right, that's my honest opinion. Everything that I think on the Helio and the Agris T40. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.